Regarding high-end timepieces, Rolex is generally the first and often the only watch brand that comes to mind. Today, Mercedes, Gucci, and Apple have become massive icons right up there with Rolex. How? It's not just about their products anymore. They represent more than that. They embody wealth, success, style, and quality in our culture. These brands are like unstoppable kings in their fields, thanks to how deeply they've embedded themselves into our global consciousness. And speaking of Rolex, they've managed to maintain their position at the top of the watchmaking game. Ever wonder how they did it? Let's find out, shall we? Rolex has five standout strategies that set them apart. Their constant innovation, smart marketing moves, consistent designs, financial freedom, and creating a sense of scarcity. It's all added up to make them the unparalleled champs in the world of watches. In 1905, these two men, Hans Wilsdorf and his brother-in-law Alfred Davis, they started this company in London, you know, importing Swiss movements and putting them into British cases. Jewelers would then slap their names on these watches and sell them. But Wilsdorf had bigger dreams. He saw the potential for their brand in the wristwatch market. So, in 1908, he came up with the name Rolex, and that's where the journey started. Right from the start, Wilsdorf understood the importance of precise timekeeping. In 1910, a Rolex watch became the first wristwatch to get this fancy Swiss certificate of chronometric precision. It was a big deal, showing how accurate these watches were. And you know what? Wilsdorf didn't stop there. He got another top-notch certification in 1914, usually reserved for marine chronometers. It's like Rolex was setting the standard for accuracy. People loved these watches, especially in Britain, where accurate timekeeping was a big deal for navigation. Demand soared, but there were some challenges, like those pesky taxes in Britain. So in 1919, Wilsdorf moved the whole operation to Geneva, Switzerland, where things got even better. But there was a problem. Moisture and dust could have wrecked these watches. So what did they do? They devised this genius solution, a fully sealed watch case called the Oyster, released in 1926. Imagine this, a completely sealed watch. People back then were skeptical. They were used to protecting their watches from everything, even rain. It took some real marketing magic to convince everyone that the Oyster case was waterproof. And that's how Rolex kept pushing the boundaries and making history. Here's a cool tidbit. Why do many Rolex watches have those distinctive fluted bezels? Well, it all goes back to the Oyster case structure. They designed these fluted bezels to be screwed on and off using a special tool. Initially, even the case back had similar fluting, but over time, that feature faded away as it didn't become a major design element. Interestingly, these fluted bezels stopped serving any real purpose after a while. The fluting became more like gentle waves than sharp ridges, making it impossible to use any tool on them. Yet despite losing its practical function, Rolex kept it as a design signature. Now you can spot it everywhere, in professional tennis matches, airport clocks, or even Rolex ads. That shiny, gleaming, fluted bezel just doing what it does best, looking stylish. In 1931, Rolex came up with something revolutionary, the first automatic winding wristwatch. It was a game-changer, known as the Oyster Perpetual. People were amazed because it was not only convenient, but also reduced wear and tear on the manual winding parts and increased water resistance. Imagine not having to wind your watch manually. Rolex was ahead of the curve, making waves in the mechanical watch industry. During World War II, while most watch companies were busy making military watches, Rolex took a different path. They focused on innovations for regular folks. Even though Switzerland was neutral, the war affected the watch industry. Rolex, being the trailblazer they were, supplied a limited number of watches to the British military and kept innovating for civilians. In 1945, they launched the Datejust. What made it stand out was its instant date change at midnight, a big deal back then when other watches took hours to change the date. And here's a fun fact. They say the name Datejust comes from the date jumping just before midnight. After the war, Rolex was perfectly positioned to cater to a growing market of affluent consumers who craved futuristic products. They introduced the Cyclops, a date magnifier, patented around 1950. You've probably seen it, that little magnifying bubble above the date on many Rolexes. It made its debut on the 1953 Datejust. Now when you see a Rolex with the Cyclops and a fluted bezel, like on the Datejust, Daydate, and Sky Dweller models, 
you instantly know it's a Rolex. It's not just innovation, it's a statement. Wilsdorf, the brains behind Rolex, knew exactly how to capture his customers' attention with these exclusive introductions. Smart move, right? All right, picture this, the 1950s, a game-changing era for Rolex. They rolled out a bunch of iconic watches, the Air King, Explorer, Submariner, GMT Master, Daydate, Milgors, Lady Datejust, and the first Deep Sea model. Each of these watches was unique in its way, especially the day date, which was the first to show both the weekday and date, and the GMT Master, the pioneer in its category. Now, what made Rolex shine wasn't just these watches themselves, but how Hans Wilsdorf, the mastermind behind Rolex, marketed them. He knew how to present these mid-century marvels to the world, which pushed Rolex to the top of the watchmaking world. It wasn't just about the watches, it was about how they were showcased, making Rolex the king of the horological world. Now, let's talk about their marketing innovations. So here's a fascinating bit of Rolex history. Hans Wilsdorf, the man behind Rolex, wasn't the first to use famous personalities to promote watches. Cartier had pilots wearing their watches, and Gégé Lecoultre's Reverso was a hit in polo circles. But Wilsdorf had a different approach. He made sure Rolex watches ended up on the wrists of incredibly brave and adventurous individuals, people who were setting records and making headlines. See, in the 20th century, setting records was a big deal, and Wilsdorf saw an opportunity. He understood that when these record breakers made the news, Rolex would get attention too. So he equipped explorers and daredevils with Rolex oysters, which were rugged and adventure ready, unlike anything else at the time. Now, people were skeptical about the oysters' ability to resist water. To prove them wrong, Wilsdorf did something ingenious. He submerged Rolex oysters in aquariums displayed in busy places, like Harrods in London. People could see for themselves that these watches were truly waterproof. But Wilsdorf didn't stop there. In 1927, he had an oyster worn by Mercedes Gleitz, who swam the English Channel in over 10 hours. She wore the watch around her neck, not her wrist, and guess what? The watch didn't leak. Wilsdorf capitalized on this achievement by placing newspaper ads featuring Gleitz's testimony about the watch's performance. This marketing tactic became a hit and was imitated by others, but Wilsdorf kept at it for decades attaching Rolex's name to various achievements and broadcasting them to the public through these testimony ads. It was a clever move that kept Rolex in the spotlight for years. As we stepped into the last quarter of the 20th century, the world's obsession with explorers and record breakers started to fade. The space race slowed and nearly every corner of the Earth had been explored and mapped. The digital age was taking over, pushing our boundaries into a virtual realm. With exploration tools going digital, mechanical watches started to need to be updated. That's when Rolex changed its game plan. Instead of relying on explorers, Rolex focused on star athletes as brand ambassadors. They also started sponsoring major sporting events like tennis, golf, motorsports, and yachting. Plus, Rolex became a patron of the arts and sciences. Here's a quick overview of what they did. In 1976, they celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Oyster by launching the Rolex Awards for Enterprise program. This initiative recognized individuals making significant contributions to the world from conservation to health. Rolex supported pioneers tackling big challenges with innovative projects, advancing human knowledge and well-being. In 1992, Rolex introduced the Yacht Master watch and began sponsoring yacht races that still captivate global audiences today. Then, in 2002, they initiated the Rolex Mentor and Protégé Arts Initiative. This program sponsored creative minds in various artistic fields, including artists, musicians, performers, and architects. While these aficionados undoubtedly added cultural value to Rolex, they also fulfilled Wilsdorf's vision of Rolex becoming a true corporate benefactor. In essence, Rolex adapted to the changing times, finding new avenues to stay relevant and continue its legacy in the world of watches and beyond. Did you know Rolex enjoys financial independence and operates as a not-for-profit organization? This means they don't pay taxes on their revenue, which gives them the freedom to focus on their vision rather than immediate profits. Unlike many other corporations, Rolex isn't pressured to grow or increase market share constantly. This unique approach allows them to remain true to their founder's unconventional spirit. Another distinctive feature of Rolex is its design consistency. While many watch brands adapt to trends, Rolex has stuck with its iconic designs. 
Even in changing fashion, they've kept their watches recognizable and classic. This steadfast adherence to their core designs, especially with their steel professional models, has made Rolex watches incredibly collectible and popular. Rolex also practices selective scarcity, especially with professional steel models like the GMT Master, Submariner, and Daytona. These watches are deliberately made in limited quantities, creating long wait lists at dealerships and driving up prices on the secondary market. Rolex's decision not to meet the market demand for these models adds an aura of exclusivity and luxury to their brand, making their watches highly coveted among enthusiasts. So we see Rolex's ability to balance financial independence, design consistency, and selective scarcity has contributed to its enduring popularity. Their watches are not just timepieces. They symbolize timeless style and exclusivity, ensuring Rolex's reign as the king of watches for the foreseeable future. We must agree with Ben Clymer, the founder and executive editor of the premier watch enthusiast site Hadinki, that Rolex is Rolex for a reason.